Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yandian. I'm starting a two-day series where I'm going to talk about being perfected under pressure. Here's the thing. All your problems come from the world, the flesh, and the devil, but God is not one of them. Let's find out what the Word of God has to say about the source of the problems you're going through, but the source of the answers also. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to another broadcast, another day of Student of the Word. Glad to have you with us today. I'm going to be taking up today, if you'll turn with me to Hebrews chapter 2, we're going to start uh, and take a look at verses 2 and 3. I call this perfected under pressure. And I think one of the greatest examples of this happens to be the life of Joseph in the Old Testament. That's the book I'm offering, how that God brought him out of the pit. And literally, he becomes part of the heroes of faith found in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, much of the book of Hebrews has to do with perfection under pressure and looks at the theological side of it. But I'm just going to be taking a look at what the Word of God has, specific examples from books of the New Testament and some things from the Old Testament on how that God delivers out of pressures, troubles, and trials. And and again, Joseph was a great example that probably the closest to the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't find a thing that Joseph did wrong. I'm sure he did because he was just human. Jesus Christ was the God man. And as far as never sinning, Jesus Christ is the only one that we find that was born outside of sin and then never committed a sin and then went to the cross as perfected. So again, we come back to it that a great example from the word of God would be the life of Joseph. And in the book of Hebrews chapter two, take a look at verses two and three with me. And by the way, if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. Glad to have you here today. And for those of you joining us the third, fourth, fifth time, thank you. For those of you who've been watching for long, long periods of time, thank you. And you know how this broadcast is growing? Oh yeah, we advertise things like that, but nothing takes the place of people just telling people. That's how Jesus' ministry grew and his reputation went everywhere. People began to talk and invite and Jesus didn't have television, didn't have radio, didn't have billboards. He just simply word of mouth. And this is how the broadcast is specifically mostly spreading. Some people have heard it by advertisements and things like that. Thank you for telling other people about the blessing this broadcast has been to you. Hebrews chapter two, verses two and three. If the word spoken by angels was steadfast, this was the Old Testament, this was the law that was given, and that was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and then was confirmed to us by those, that's Peter, James, John, those who heard him. And so uh, in this verse of scripture, probably the apostle Paul who wrote this was saying this, that we can neglect so great salvation. God has provided in the salvation message of the uh, New Testament, these provisions, the fact that we get saved, uh, we get the Holy Spirit comes to live in us, but also there is the aspect of Jesus Christ dying for us so that we can also have power in our daily life against the things that come against us. There's three things the New Testament tells us that causes persecution to come into our life. The world, that's the world system around us because it's under a curse. And that curse started with Adam and that Ad Adamic curse went throughout the entire earth. There's a curse in this earth. Next of all, our own flesh. And that also is part of the curse. And that's the nature of the flesh found inside our body. The Bible says that we have uh, inside of us sin, which dwells in our human body the body of sin. And so this is where we have trouble too from our own natural flesh, and that is yet to be redeemed. But the third area is uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil himself. There can actually come temptations to us from Satan, as he did with Jesus, approached him personally. We have demonic forces in this earth that come directly from Satan. But I want you to notice what's missing out of that. God himself. And so the three things that bring, again, persecutions, trials, and troubles into our life is the world system, our own flesh, and Satan himself. God is not the author of these things. We're told this in the opening of the book of James. Now, there are those who tell us, well, you know what I'm going through. God knows it's here, and God knows how has to bring me out. No, what God has given you, the weapons to come out of it. Let's just come back to this, uh, teaching your child about you know how to operate the things of this life. They come to a certain age. You've been telling them, telling them, telling them that the curb out in front of your house is 
is the borderline. You do not go out past the curb. Don't walk out into the streets. Stay here where the area is green. This is our front yard. That's our backyard. It's fenced. Go, go beyond the fence. Don't go beyond. We give them boundaries in life. What happens if they walk over against that, walk out in the street, are hit by a car, end up in the hospital? We're going to see them. Can they look at the parents and say, you're the one that sent that car. You're the one that sent and had them run over me. No, it, we've told you how to get out of it. Here's the point of it. You can't point to your parents at that time. When we run into problems, it's either the world, the flesh, or the devil. It is not God. God has given us warnings about everything. Here's your boundaries. Here's where to go, all this. And listen, even though we're within the boundaries, problem can still come. But yet, well, here's the point. Once you take what God has told you and told you and told you from Old Testament and New Testament on how to work your way through problems. He's simply telling you, I didn't send the problem, I'm sending the answer. In fact, I have an answer figured out before the problem ever came along. And whether it's the world, the flesh or the devil, my answers will bring you out. And so once we understand that, we know that we like children. There's times we can either walk out in the road and get hit, or there's times when we can be in the yard and we didn't know, but a snake bites us. I mean, we were doing what we were supposed to do and problems still came along. We live in a world full of problems, but we also live in a world that's full of answers that come through the word of God and the power of the word of God. And notice what Paul says in this verse of scripture, that the things that God spoke to us, those disciples heard it, of which Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they're gonna persecute you, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. In other words, persecutions, tests, and trials are part of the Christian life. And they can simply come against you because you are a Christian, because you do know Jesus and you do put your trust in him and the world will come against you. Satan will come against you. Your own flesh keeps trying to pull you away from the things of God. But greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, in Satan or in my flesh. That's the good news we have. So this verse is simply brought, bringing out too that there are three aspects to our salvation. We have a past tense salvation. We were born again when we accepted Jesus as Lord and the Savior, that's our salvation that takes us to heaven. We are in a present day situation of salvation in which we learn to walk day by day closer and closer to the perfect will of God. And though I'm making progress, I never will totally get there until I have a resurrection body. And then my future salvation is a resurrection body. So spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, I have been born again. Soul, I'm being renewed. My mind is being renewed daily by the promises of God to where one day the mind of Bob is replaced with the mind of Christ. And then my future salvation comes when I receive a resurrection body made in the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that will happen at the rapture of the church. And at that time, all Christians who have died from Pentecost until now will come back with Jesus, receive their uh, resurrection body. Then Bob will join them and you will too, if you're alive at the time of the rapture, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the clouds. This is what will happen to that future salvation. In the meantime, while we're here on earth, God has provided answers to bring us through every situation. I'm gonna give you another example. Suppose that you wanna go into the military. The military tells you if you will follow these guidelines, that these guidelines will keep you alive. First of all, we want you to know that your weapons are greater than the weapons of the enemy. Enemy. I don't care what they tell you on TV. I don't care what you hear by rumor is that, you know, this country or that country we're going against have a better weapon system. The United States has the best weapons in the entire world, and you are now learning to use it. Learn to use your weapons, and we're going to train you and train you and train you on how to use them. Then we're going to train you on how to crawl through a certain space, and if bullets are flying over your head, so we go through all these different areas, and we practice, 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 and then finally, after a number of times, they simply tell you, if you'll follow these guidelines, you will not be shot and you will be able to kill the enemy. You know what that is? That's not saying the United States government is the one who invented the enemy. No, the enemy is out there. We invented this military to fight against them and our weapons are superior. To simply tell you as a Christian is that you're going to face problems and tests and trials. And oh, by the way, God is sending those tests and trials your way. That's like telling a person, joining the military. No, no, it, the enemy that's out there, the 
communists that are out there, the others attacking our country. God put them out there or our nation actually put them out there. We create the enemy, then we create you to go fight the enemy. No, that's not it. There is an enemy out there because there's evil in this earth and there are people trying to conquer good people and put them into slavery. And we see this today with different governments around the world. But what we have in our country is freedom and that freedom has caused us to have the finest military, the finest airplanes, the finest fighter planes, the finest of weapons to come against the enemy and win. This is God. This is our nation's plan, but it's also God's plan. The weapons of our warfare, and they're listed in Ephesians chapter six, are mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. But God didn't invent the strongholds. Satan, the flesh, and the and the world system out there are the ones who created those strongholds, but God has given us greater power against it. We serve the God and the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of the military from heaven. Jesus Christ is the head lead one over them and the, the forces of God and the angels of heaven come to fight on his behalf. It comes back to this basically, the world is evil. It happened when Satan got through to Adam and Eve, they sinned, turned the curse over in the world. Galatians chapter one, verses three and four says this, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for, who gave himself in exchange for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. I want you to notice he died on the cross not to force you to be saved, but he might deliver you. And that might means you have a choice in this that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Underline the word present. It will not be evil forever, but it is evil right now. There's gonna come a time when Jesus is gonna come back, rid the world of Satan, rid the world of demons, rid the world of the curse. All unbelievers, all religion will be cast off the face of the earth. All demonic forces, fallen angels, and then finally, last of all, even the curse will be removed from the earth and Jesus Christ will sit on the throne in Jerusalem and rule for a thousand years. And then after that, that's only the introduction. After that comes eternal reign from the city of Jerusalem, he will rule. And so it says he will, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Right now, even deliverance in this present evil world can come and will come if we'll let it. So it might deliver us from this present evil world. First of all, he might deliver us from sin itself and from Satan's power, that's the new birth. But after that, he also has given us promises that he might deliver us in this life we're living from this present evil world system, according to the will of God and our Father. We are not taken out, but we are left in the world that is under a curse. If God's plan was just to get us saved, then he would take us into heaven immediately. But God has left us here for a reason. That is to be salt and light in this earth. In this evil world, we are salt. He simply asks us, stay spiritual, don't get carnal, because if you do, then the salt will lose its savor. My effectiveness in this world will be challenged. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 19 says, the whole world lies in wickedness. God didn't create the wickedness. He created the answer for the wickedness. And the moment that Adam and Eve failed, God even told them and Satan what the answer was going to be. It will come from the seed of the woman. The virgin birth is gonna introduce the Messiah that will come into this world and deliver us. We're gonna come back right after the break and talk about this even more. In the meantime, get yourself prepared because we have more to, in fact, this will carry right over into tomorrow, you're going to be blessed by the Word of God. I'll see you right after the break. Rising Out of the Pit shares lessons from one of the most beloved characters in Scripture. Joseph was full of dreams from God, favored by his father, betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery, and locked in a dungeon. He faced trials far worse than most Christians ever see. But God delivered him, and he will also deliver you. If you feel like you're bound in Egypt, lost in the wilderness, or facing a fight, Joseph's story encourages, inspires, and instructs. Whether great or small, the only way to overcome your problem is God's way. Strengthen your faith, courage, and hope as you join Bob Yandian in studying the life of Joseph. To order Rising Out of the Pit, visit our website at bobyandian.com. This newly revised and expanded handbook is packed with biblical wisdom and practical guidance from the pastoral trenches. It will help to equip and encourage you in your ministry. 
Bobby Endian, a veteran pastor of more than 30 years, provides answers to common questions relating to your everyday pastoral duties and personal life. Bob covers topics such as the First Pastors Conference in Acts 20, Passion versus Calling, Daily Schedules, Living a Balanced Life, Wolves After Your Sheep, The Glorious Church, Pastors Need Pastors, Whose Flock Do You Pastor, Spiritual Workaholics, Family Before Ministry, The Pastor's Heart, and The Bond of Peace. Bob will help you apply timeless biblical wisdom to the issues and dynamics of today's pastoral ministry. To order, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Let's take a look at that verse we just left, Galatians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, given to us from the Word of God to again point out that our problems don't come from God Himself. It doesn't come from Jesus Christ. And uh, it comes from the world, it comes from our own flesh, and it comes from the, uh, the world of the flesh and Satan himself. That's Satan and demonic forces in this earth. But God is not mentioned there. It's nowhere in the word of God that God is our problem. God is our answer from the Old Testament to the New Testament. You say, yeah, but the Old Testament says that God brought these things in. There's times when God can't stop it, okay? He's told us how to, but there's times we wanna just run into the street like a child and, get, and we you know face those cars coming thinking we're greater than all that and actually put ourselves in tempting the devil. And even Jesus said that I, I will not tempt the Lord my God. God uh, by walking into the midst of problems or throwing myself off of a building thinking God will deliver me. That's not what happens. But there's times again when we put ourselves in harm's way and refuse to listen to God and we can't blame God when the problems come along. No, that happened from the world system. Notice again, Galatians chapter one, verses three and four, grace be to you in peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself in exchange for our sins. That's the cross that he might deliver us. First part of deliverance comes when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Then the part of us that delivers us from this present evil world, and that's the world system, is following the Word of God. The Word of God gives us His plans. The Word of God gives us His plans for deliverance, and the Word of God also tells us that our weapons are superior to Satan. We are in a military fight against a military world, and our weapons are greater. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, uh, the helmet of salvation, feet covered with the gospel of Jesus Christ, plus more. It simply means we have greater weapons than, our, than Satan does, and we just need to stand firm. And having done all to stand, keep on standing. Why? Because you're going to win this thing. Have you been knocked down before, Bob? Yes, I have many times. But what do you do? Get back up. The righteous keep getting back up. The point of it is I'm just going to outlast the devil. And if it goes 10 rounds, 15 rounds, I don't go to a specific number of rounds. I just go until I'm standing and the devil's on the on the floor. He has to give up after a while. He'll come back later, try again. But even with Jesus, it took three times. It is written, it is written, it is written. And Satan had to leave for a while. It's the same way with us. He'll leave, but it'll be for a while. He'll go out and figure out a new plan, come back to us. But in each case, God has told us what's what's gonna bring us out. The verse we looked at says, 1 John 5, 19, even though we have been saved, we are left in this world for a reason. First of all, we've been left here so we can grow in the things of God and bring in other converts and then turn them into disciples. He's left us here. A convert alone goes to heaven but a disciple takes other people with him. 1 John 5, 19 says the whole world lies in wickedness. Notice that the whole world lies in wickedness. It didn't say the wickedness comes from God because there is no wickedness in God. Deliverance comes from the the Lord in a wicked world. Again, the three things that cause us is the world, the flesh, and the devil. Those are the three things that can cause us to sin, temptation coming against us, and God's name is not mentioned there. 1 John 2, 16, for all that is in the world is not of the Father. And it says there in the world system, this is not of the Father. It is of the transgression of Adam and opening the door for Satan and the curse to come in. And the first Adam got us into this mess. The last Adam is the one that gets us out of this mess. So we are left in a world with a curse still in it. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 22 and verse 23, we know. You know, there's your key right there. What do you know? What gets you out of trouble is not screaming to God, yelling to him, throwing yourself on the floor, having a temper tantrum. No, it says we know what's going to get you out of this problem is what you know, falling back on what you know. You may not know what you're getting into totally, but you don't have to know the devil's plan. You know God's plan, and God's plan is he already knows the devil's plan and has simply made a way of escape before the problem ever came. I don't have to know where Satan's coming from. I don't have to know all of his plans. I have my plans, which came from God, and I know the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. The whole of creation includes all of the plants, all the animals, the atmosphere around the earth. Satan is the God of this world and also the prince of the power of the air. He controls demonic forces in the atmosphere around us and he controls the nations around us. But there's gonna come a day when Jesus Christ will come back and on that day, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and forever. I like to think of it this way. God owns the earth. Satan just has an apartment here. He has a temporary lease on this earth, but his lease is going to come to an end and God will not renew it. And that will happen at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In that time, Satan's out to trash this planet. He's the worst leaser that God's ever had. He turned it over to Adam and Eve and they were taking good care of the earth, but they turned it over to this rotten guy called Satan. And Satan has come in and tried to destroy the earth. And even right now, trying to take control of the entire thing. He's trying to get rid of Christians, get rid of Israel, stop God in his tracks and Jesus Christ in his tracks and simply take over this planet. But it's not gonna work. We're even told in the word of God, according to God's foreknowledge and God's plan of what's going to happen. And God, who in prophecy has kept every single word of his prophecies up until now, will also take care of that. We know the whole world groans and travails in pain together until now. The earth is under a curse. It's a temporary curse, and it will last until the time Jesus comes back. And when Jesus comes back, finally the curse will be gone. And what happens at that time is all of nature will cry out in glorious praise, and the trees will clap their hands. The oceans will clap their hands because the curse has now been taken away and they will applaud the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 23, not only they, that's all of nature, but ourselves also who have the first fruits of the spirit, that's the new birth. Notice it's called the first fruits because there's other fruits coming after it, two more. We're going to have a resurrection body and then one day we're gonna be with God forever in heaven. So we're working on this one. Every day we're getting better in our thinking because that's the renewing of the mind and one day we'll even have a resurrection body. But the first fruits of our salvation is the new birth itself. Even we also groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption adoption, that is the redemption of our body. It's our body that's in contact with the world, and this is where the nature of the flesh is. But if we are spiritually minded, we don't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. But if we're carnally minded, then at that point, we simply open ourselves up to the attacks of the devil. It simply comes back. Our flesh can tempt us, the world can tempt us, and Satan and demonic forces can tempt us but they do not come from God. So we are waiting for the adoption, that is the redemption of our body, that is the resurrection of the church at the coming of Jesus Christ at the rapture, and the world is waiting for seven years after that when the millennium will begin. We groan because we are left in a world filled with adversity and filled with trials. Take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 2. While you're going there, Again, I just want to say thank you. I take an opportunity in every broadcast to thank God for those who stand with me, those who are partners with this ministry, who those have been listening for some time and believe in what we're doing. And I, literally, I take up all subjects. I, the Word of God, we go into many passages of the Word of God because why? For 33 years, I was a pastor. We taught throughout the entire Word of God, verse by verse, Old Testament, New Testament. Sunday mornings, I took up topics in the Word of God. And so this is what I'm doing. And I basically become your pastor. But what I'm doing now, and I don't take the place of your pastor, I'm a pastor in your life. I'm not your local church. Go to your local church, send your tithes there. Give your tithes there. But when it comes to offerings above that, that's what I'm asking for, an offering of your life, first of all, your heart, first of all. And if I have your heart and I have your attention, I have your love, then money will follow that. I don't want you giving to me out of obligation or necessity. I want you giving out of love. 
1 Corinthians 13, 3 tells us this. And so in these verses of scripture we've been looking at, it simply comes back to that God is speaking to a group of people that I want to speak to, those that are really dedicated to become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for those who now support me, surround me, and I'd like for you to become a part of that if you're not right now. And many of you already have that knowing in your heart there's a certain drawing together, there's a certain link between us, and that link is that you know what I stand for and you agree with that. And so if God has spoken to you, what are you waiting for? Just join me as a partner. Say, well, I I just don't have that much money. Well, listen, whatever you have, start giving. And I'm not asking for a certain amount, I'm asking you to just simply step out and as you purpose in your heart, give. You may hear from the Holy Spirit. In fact, I ask you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit what he would have you to do. And then beyond that, if you don't have anything from the Holy Spirit, he trusts you. Just open up your heart and say, what can I do? And start to give and watch God bless you. Not only it'll it'll fulfill the ministry here, but when you give out of love and give out a proper motive, it will come back to you. Go to my website, bobyandian.com. There's a place on there where you too can join me as a partner. Romans 8, 22 says again, we know. That's the key right there. We know what we know will get us through, that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we also groan within ourselves, waiting for that day of the adoption, that is the redemption of our body. 2 Corinthians 5, 2 says this, we groan because we are left with adversities and trials in this earth. God doesn't bring them. He gives us answers, not problems, okay? And once we face the world around us and we stand on God's answers, which are the word of God, we can overcome the Satan that's in this world, the flesh that we are con- right now under control, uh, that tries to control us, but also the world system. Second Corinthians 5, 2, in this, that is our body, we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven, that is a resurrection body. What am I waiting for ultimately, the final redemption and the third part of the redemption that I face. Number one, salvation was in my spirit. Next of all, daily salvation, perfecting of the thoughts I have, the renewing of the mind, and finally the last will be my body, a resurrection body. That's what will ultimately bring me in and I will have no more temptations because I'll be taken out of this world system, away from Satan, raptured into heaven, and also my body will be made brand new. And that time, Finally, okay, until then, if you die physically and go to heaven right now and Jesus hasn't come yet, you're released from that uh, from that area called your flesh and also from the world system around you from Satan too, but there's coming a day you'll even have a resurrection body like the Lord Jesus Christ and we're really, really looking forward to that day. And so 2 Corinthians 5, 2 simply says again, in this body we groan, not only does does nature groan around us because of the curse? The one part of us still attached to the curse of this earth is our flesh. And the the, the real uh, happen in the garden was this, is that the curse that came in entered into the dust of the ground and anything made of dust received that curse. So animals and plants, but our human body also, which was taken from the dust of the ground, received a curse. And I've been redeemed on the inside in my spirit, being redeemed daily in my thought processes, the renewing of the mind. But last of all, in a moment, the twinkling of an eye, this body will put on incorruption and I'll be have a body just like that of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wanna thank you for joining us today and also we'll continue this tomorrow. I'm simply asking you that between today and tomorrow when this broadcast comes back, think about this. Quit blaming God for your problems. Start looking at God for your answers. He no more sent this stuff around you, the problems you're going through, than I would dare send any problems to my children. But I warn them ahead of time, these problems are out there. Our problems are out there. Satan has put them there. The curse that's out there is there. But I simply want you to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and think about this. The answers that I have in the Word of God are greater than the problems that Satan has thrown against me. See you tomorrow. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. Visit bobyandian.com. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.